Just see what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, when I'm pressing them, there's no click. They've been forced in. If you listen, there's no click. Oh, this one is a little. There's a little bit of give on that one, but there's nothing happening on here. So uh, yeah, that's definitely not right. So I think what we'll do is let's just take it apart and see what's happening with the top. Right, I can hear I can <laughs> quite a lot of rattling inside, which isn't great. Battery for clock memory only. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, nice bit of uh, nice bit of leakage there, isn't it? Look. Yeah, okay. So a battery's leaked nicely there. We'll have to have a little look at that as well. I can see the foam's all discoloured. It really does look old. Right, that screw was really in tightly, so I don't think that this has been... Yeah, I don't think this has been ever opened which is good for me because it means there's more chance of more chance of fixing it. Now I've got to be careful when I take this apart because obviously we have 240 volts going straight into it. Of course I've unplugged it and it's dead at the moment, but there might well still be capacitors in there that are uh, that are storing power. All these bits falling out all over the place. Bits of, uh, I don't know, bits of green. Look at that. Ah, right, that's not a good sign. That does look like some kind of switch or something. I wonder whether the plastic on under those switches has all, has all failed. There's another screw in the middle here. I actually do quite like the look of it if that was cleaned up. All right, here we go. Right, I don't know where all these green bits are actually coming from. Hopefully it will make sense make sense in a bit. So we're dealing with the ones here. So actually, we don't really have to get too involved in it. So where is all those? I can still hear it all rattling inside. But hopefully it will become apparent. Ah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Right, before I even take that off, if you have a look under here, can you see that there's like a green pad there. So I think what's happened is there must be like some plastic pads under here that are going onto the contacts and it looks like all of them have broken. In fact, it looks like something's burnt here or maybe maybe dampness or water got spilt on it. Maybe it might not actually be repairable. Yeah, that does look, does look rusty here. Let's undo those little screws and see what's underneath it. Look at that wire there. <laughs> Look at that wire there! It's just hanging on for dear life. It's been the screw's gone right through it. Wow. Okay, that's going to need sorting out. Look. Can you see? Can you see there? There's only a bit left. I reckon that happened at the manufacturers. Yeah, that's not great, is it? That was that middle. I'm thinking. Yeah, that's that middle screw there. Actually, if the battery, hold on one second, was the battery here? The battery's leaked on it, hasn't it? Yeah, the battery's here. I reckon because of all the corrosion here, the battery's leaked onto, maybe it was stored upside down and the battery poured itself out onto this connector up here. Because these screws are also rusty. Right, the moment of truth, what's going to happen underneath here? Let's uh, zoom in a bit more. Yeah, there we go. Can you see all those? Uh, this would have been rubber originally. I think they would have been like rubber pads to go onto here. It's actually sort of more like turned to plastic now. 
just walk on brittle. Right, well that's not work, that's why it's not working. Is there anything I can do to fix that now? I wonder... I wonder what sort of design, is it just going to be similar to, for example, a... Uh, you know, like the membrane on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox controllers and stuff like that. I wonder whether it's going to be a similar thing to that. So here are the buttons. I don't know whether that's melted in or whether... I mean, that does seem to be plastic. Well, that's what all the rat rattling around was anyway. Oh, there we go. Look, that's the carbon. That's the sort of carbon thing at the bottom there that would have been making the connection, I reckon. There. Yeah, I reckon these must have been some kind of rubber. Okay, well, look, I might not necessarily get it working, but it's still kind of interesting just to diagnose what happened. So I think battery leaked, leaked onto here, and then uh, just ate away at the rubber and made it rock hard and bristle. So what I have to do now is I've got to find some kind of membrane or something that I can put on there to mimic mimic the presses just to see if it works because this might be a completely different setup I don't know right let me have a search around the house see if I've got anything well I've had a look around and I have got these membranes here from the uh, Mega Joy 2000 this handheld I think it was an NES clone I never actually got it working but this is the thing that keeps on giving. I only just recently tried to use the crystal in this for my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing. So uh, although this hasn't worked, it's kind of been good because I've been able to harvest spares from it. So what I'm wondering is, if I just get them, and if I press them on here, is that going to make the contact? Right, I've forgotten which is which, so let's just uh, see what will happen. If I just touch one of them, this is very hard to do. There you go, can you see it's moving? So it does work. Look, there you go, I'm up to four o'clock now. Five, six, okay. So it looks like these pads are going to work and that's the minute. So I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. I've got to work out a way to cut these pads and stick them onto the bottom here. Uh, yeah, not too sure. That's what I have to work out how to do. Let me have a little think about that. But that's definitely going to work if I can get them all lined up. Well, let me turn this off. Right, so we're unplugged now again. Perfect, look. Those two line up perfectly like that. So I'm going to cut it down the middle here and put the other two that side, square them off a bit. I think this is going to do, because luckily the buttons are kind of spaced out roughly the same. If you have a look here, the two ones here are going to be in the middle there and there. I think that might well work, you know, and I might use a bit of hot glue gun or something just to get them down onto it. Happy with that. So when the glue gun heats itself up, I'm just going to put a little dot here. I'm just going to put a dot at the corners. But before I do that, I'm going to get a cotton bud, a Q-tip, and I'm just going to clean this up with a bit of IPA because it just looks a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit corroded. Alright, so this is what I'm using here. Just dip that into it, and let's give that a nice good clean. Yeah, there you go, you can see. Not too bad, actually. certain that the battery did leak onto that. Right, okay, I think that's going to be clean enough. I'm just going to let that evaporate off and then we'll use the glue gun to glue it down. Right, so I'm just going to line them up roughly in the middle. Luckily it's got a cutout so I'm kind of putting the middle bit in the cutout. You see this middle prong here.
Right, okay, that's that bit done. I know it doesn't look as professional now. When it gets a little bit harder, I'll uh, wipe away some of that excess. But you know, if it works, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be good, isn't it? But have a look now. You can see there's definitely pressing in. It's got a nice click to them. Right, so before I put it back together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a quick clean out, just because there's still quite a lot of the residue off the. Uh, the bits of old rubber and stuff like that. So I'm going to give it a clean and clean all these out because you can see that there's a lot of staining around the buttons. So I'm just going to use a wet wipe for that. Just giving that a quick wipe, the battery compartment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, the battery connector, I'm going to wait until it's all put back together and then I can deal with uh, deal with that bit there. So really now, I'm not going to do any more than that on the inside because it's not particularly dusty. I can do the rest of the cleaning on the outside now. So let's pop these things back in. And we'll screw this back on and we'll see if it's going to uh, make a connection or not. See, those membranes might be a bit too big and maybe now it's just going to force itself to be on all the time. But if that's the case, I can maybe fit a little spacer between the edge here and the screws here to then push them a bit further away. Do you know what I mean? Imagine now if there was a little washer just here on this bit here and the other side, it's going to push it out. So it's going to push this further away, isn't it? So if that doesn't work, it's not this, uh, it's not the end of the world. I still think I will be able to get it to work. Yeah, they feel okay. What I'm doing is I'm not doing them up really, really tight. I'm leaving them just a little bit slack. And I can feel when I press them in now, look, you can see they've got spring to them. I think I'm going to put the cover back on and, uh, yeah, put the cover back on, see how it performs. And then we can give the outside a really, really good clean. I've got, I need to solder that wire on the inside, don't I? You know, the one where the middle screw had gone through. Yeah, so I need to unsolder that and then cut it back and solder it back onto that point there. And also try to reroute it so the same thing's not going to happen again on this one here. Let's get that sorted. There we go, that's going to be out of harm's way, isn't it? Right, let's get this thing back together. So I've given up a really nice clean up. There's a few scratches and stuff around the place. It actually looks like it's painted plastic. So there is some chips and stuff on it. But overall, I think it looks really nice. So there we have it in all its glory and it is working absolutely perfectly. These buttons now feel completely normal. It's like they've loosened up a little bit or found their home, but that works fine. And you can see there the time change in there. Press sleep. You can hear the radio with the light on there. Hit that and it turns off. I've gone through all the features of it and it all appears to be working just fine. And you can make it dimmer here, for example, if it's too bright at night. Probably can't see it now because it's quite bright in here. But it is actually just lit up there. I can see it with my own eyes. There you go, you can see it there now. So, uh, yeah, nice little device. Would have been cheap even when it was new because it's only a Bush product. You know, it's not like Sony or Panasonic or anything. But still... It's lasted the test of time, hasn't it? And what a nice little fix there. Who would have thought that the Mega Joy 2000 controller would have come in handy to fix this one? So it just shows you, really, sometimes you shouldn't throw out your old stuff. If you just kept it in a garage or under the stairs or up in the attic or something, then you can always use things like that to fix other things in the future, even if they're completely unrelated, like you've seen in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.